everybody. So today's Monday. That means it's time for family movie night. And today we're getting ready for Suzume. And so we're talking about some of the uh, movies from Makoto Shinkai the next couple of weeks that uh, I haven't given a review for on the channel. And uh, today we're talking about Weathering With You. And this was his follow-up to Your Name. Of course, super hyped because everybody loves Your Name, including myself. And I, I don't think this is as strong a film as Your Name. And has some of the same elements, so it's easy to compare the two because both movies are teenage romances. Both of them have Radwimp scores. Both of them are about natural phenomenons. In this case, it's rain. Uh, in the case of Your Name, it's comets. So it, it feels somewhat similar as far as the aesthetic and style. And of course, it's Makoto Shinkai. So you're going to have some similarities between the, the animator and director on both projects. But I think they're actually quite different in a lot of other ways. I, I think that the the characters and the story aren't quite as effective in Weather Review versus Your Name. Uh, but uh, let's talk about some of the things I do really like about this film. I think that the animation is just absolutely beautiful, especially anytime they're depicting the water. Uh, it is just awe inspiring gorgeous uh and you know i love a romance and so i i think that when you watch this movie you really do have to kind of take out your cynicism especially the ending uh and you have to realize that makoto shinkai is a very sentimental guy and he is a hardcore romantic <laughs> uh that and, and so you just have to accept it on that level um but i don't think the characters are quite as strong as mitsuha and taki in your name just the lore isn't isn't quite there her name is all steeped in tradition and religion and this uh, is kind of like quasi fantasy i don't know it doesn't have those those strong underbearings that your name has. But so Weathering With You is about this boy and he becomes friends with this kind of like a cult uh, journalist, sort of a uh, sensationalist. And he, and he meets this girl who can control the weather. But as she tries to control the weather, she loses parts of herself, making and eventually making her completely disappear. And uh, and so it's basically their love story. She's a sunshine girl. Uh, the more that it actually rains in Tokyo, and by the end, you have the whole city is is completely covered in water. And what I think is kind of bonkers about the ending is that that their love is like more important than the whole city. Like there's no, like most environmental fables uh, would either be kind of like a sad thing that they, that we've let, you know, things get out of control or it would be like, they'd be finding a way to save everything. And in this case, they don't, they don't, it's not really presented as sad and they don't don't really save anything because uh because it's it's the happy ending is that their love persists and that they're just going to be perfectly happy living in this world of of a flooded uh, uh flooded tokyo um which is just kind of bonkers <laughs> but i really do enjoy the two lead characters i think that they do have a nice chemistry together and it's just so beautiful them flying through the air with the beautiful uh, water and uh, animation uh, and Radwimp's music, all so enjoyable. And there's some nice humor in the movie. I think the supporting characters, everybody this a cult uh, website are really fun and funny and the way they tease Daka is charming and funny and sweet and you just enjoy getting to know these characters there is like a super super egregious McDonald's uh, promo in this movie uh, where basically the Big Mac is presented as the uh, greatest meal ever like literally say that and so you know that's that's kind of interesting Heine actually works at McDonald's that's how they meet is she gives them this like free Big Mac and there's this long scene where it's like oh there's also some like violence in the movie with a gun 
and some gun violence and it gets to some darker places. Uh, so that would be something of concern if you are showing it to like little kids, but, uh, but overall it definitely has a message of love, of kindness, of uh, fighting for love, all of that's there. It has an environmental message, but in the end it's, 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 uh, kind of put to the wayside over the importance of love. Uh, so some people might be frustrated with that. I just kind of go with it. It's fine. <laughs> Um, so while I don't think that this movie is as good as your name, uh, I do think it is a, a solid film and it was better than I remembered. I have to say, I think I enjoyed it more without having to necessarily compare it to your name. So I, I think that that's kind of almost unfair to compare it to your name because it's one of the best animated films ever. This is a love story. If you like love stories, it's got some charming characters, some absolutely stunning animation and, uh, and some interesting choices in the story. So I definitely say, give it a shot, watch it. It's on HBO max. And, uh, yeah, let me know what you think of this one. And, uh, please like this video, please subscribe to the channel. I would be very grateful. Check out the Patreon and merch store. And we have hashtag animation junkie shirts at the merch store. And if you haven't checked out the Patreon, it's a great way to, to get in touch with other animation fans through our Facebook group that we have. And then we also have monthly watch alongs and, uh, every week we have a new review for a five passions project that you get to read so lots of good stuff for joining the patreon so please take a look at that and uh, thanks so much everybody we'll talk to you later bye